Grace, mercy, and peace, these are the gifts that are yours from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. I begin by reading once again the words of Jesus at the end of our Gospel text. Jesus says, But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed, because they cannot repay you. For you will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. Dear friends in Christ, are you familiar with the term trolling? Those of you who are younger than me might be more familiar with this term than those of you who are older than me. Trolling is a term that is associated with the internet, with social media, and it is the tactic of those who would provoke a response, usually from a celebrity or maybe a politician on social media. They will provoke a response by saying something perhaps off topic, something outlandish, perhaps even something incendiary, just to get a reaction, and then the celebrity or the politician's reaction to their provocation becomes the story. That is called trolling, trying to get a reaction from somebody. It's kind of like that kid in second grade that kept poking me and poking me and poking me, and poking me, and poking me, until finally I pushed him and said, Knock it off! Stop it! And guess who got sent to the principal's office? Yes, it's the person who reacts that becomes the center of attention, and not the provocation, not the one doing the trolling. Well, in our Gospel text today, there is something of trolling going on. Long before the internet existed, long before social media, the Pharisees and the lawyers who are in this house are trolling Jesus. They are looking for reaction because they have brought this man with this disease called dropsy. Does anybody know what dropsy is? Does anybody have dropsy? No, I shouldn't ask that. Dropsy if you looked at the Greek word for dropsy, you would see that it says hydropicus, hydro. You see that root word hydro, and you immediately think it has something to do with water, right? You know hydro? Water, right? It has to do with water, a fluid building up in your bodily tissues, in your muscles. And this fluid builds up, and it causes great bulges and it looks kind of gross, no doubt about it, but dropsy was usually the symptom of some more serious disease. Symptom of heart failure, a symptom of circulatory issues, perhaps a blood infection. Yes, dropsy was usually the mark that something very serious was going on with that person. So the Pharisees brought this man into this house on the Sabbath day to put Jesus to a sort of test. Would Jesus obey the Sabbath laws not to lift a finger, not to work, not to labor in any way, certainly not to heal on the Sabbath? Because if he did, if he healed this man, he would have broken these laws and therefore proven that he was not the Messiah. He was not the Son of God. He was not who he claimed to be. And he certainly was not holy or just. But of course, if Jesus doesn't heal this man, well, he's heartless, compassionless. He has no mercy. He has no love in his heart. And so they bring this man to Jesus on the Sabbath, trolling him, knowing that it's a, it's a lose-lose situation for Jesus. Either way, Jesus' reaction to the situation will no doubt condemn him in the Pharisees' eyes. 
But Jesus, in the way that only Jesus can, puts the Sabbath into perspective, even for these Pharisees. He says, you Pharisees who say that you are not to work or do any labor on the Sabbath, if your son, or even if one of your ox, falls into a pit on the Sabbath, what would you do? Would you honor the Sabbath laws and let your son or ox die? Or would you help him out? What would you do? Would you show mercy or would you show obedience to your law? What would you do? And if you say that you would help your son out, aren't you guilty of breaking the same Sabbath laws that you are trying to accuse me of, these man-made laws that you have created? But if you don't help your own son, how heartless and compassionless and loveless are you? You see, Jesus beats them at their own game. He answers their question with a question. He calls them on their trolling ways and says, you obviously don't really care about the Sabbath or this person. The only thing you care about is trapping me and getting me. And Luke tells us that they could not reply to these things. Jesus has left them speechless, without answer. Once again, Jesus has had the last word. And then Jesus goes on to tell a short parable about attending a great feast, a wedding feast. And he says, do not sit down in the place of honor or you might be embarrassed and ashamed when the host asks you to move. Sorry, this seat is for immediate family only. How embarrassing that would be for us. Oh, you might think you're important, but you're not that important. You're certainly not more important than these people. And to be moved in front of the entire assembly of wedding guests, well, that would be downright shameful. But Jesus says if you start off in the lowest place, you can only move up. If you start off humbled, and then the host says, hey, come over here instead, sit with me. Well then, you've been promoted, lifted up, exalted to a higher place. And then people start to look at you and say, well, this person must be more important than we thought. So, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, how important are you to Jesus? How important was this man who suffered from dropsy? How important were the Pharisees to Jesus? Well, the answer, of course, is that each and every one of these people, including you and me, are important enough for Jesus to humble himself and die for, to hang on the cross for, to bleed, and to suffer for. But do we approach Jesus, as the Pharisees did, and declare our worth worthiness of his sacrifice? Do we go to Jesus and point to our accomplishments, our successes, our good works, and say, Jesus, I deserve the blessings that you give. I deserve to sit in the higher seat. Or do we come to Jesus as we came this morning, confessing our sin and our sinfulness? Do we come to Jesus humbly saying, Jesus, I have nothing to give you. I have nothing that you want. I am unworthy to be at your table, to be at your banquet, to be at your feast. And then humbled, do we give Jesus the opportunity to lift us up and to exalt us to a higher place? Do we give Jesus the opportunity to say to us, dear friend, come up higher. Jesus says that when you give a feast, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. For you will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. Jesus has invited the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind.
to recline at table with him, to sit with him and eat with him and feast with him. He has invited you and me with nothing in our hands to offer him, nothing in our wallets of righteousness with which to repay him. No, all this he does out of divine goodness and mercy, without any merit or worthiness in me. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the gospel is not a bribe. Jesus did not save you because he could get something from you in return. He does not expect any payment from you or, or for his gifts. Otherwise, they would simply not be gifts. In fact, if we try to pay God back for the mercy that he has shown us in Jesus Christ, it would greatly diminish the value and the beauty of his gifts. No. His gifts are free, and you are his reward. You in yourself, your salvation and eternal life with him is his payback for selflessly loving you to the point of the cross. You, who he sometimes must humble so that he can then also lift you up, you are invited to a feast that you have no business being at, a table that you are entirely unworthy of. But Jesus, in his grace and mercy, lifts us up from hopelessness and despair and gives us a higher seat next to him who is at the right hand of none other than God the Father Almighty. Jesus says to you, friend, move up higher. Come, sit with me. You are my delight. You are my payback for all that I have done for you. Yes, dear friends in Christ, you are Jesus' reward, and you are what he values most. To you, he says, friend, come up higher. Come with me. Sit with me. Eat with me. Feast with me this day. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, amen. <laughs>